Hi again, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and Lesson 26 in the Technician Operator Element 2 Preparation Course. In this lesson, we cover the T7D questions and basic repair and testing. The T7D section of questions goes over soldering and the use of a voltmeter, ammeter, and ohmmeter. All right, let's get started. Which instrument would you use to measure electric potential or electromotive force? All right, first of all, you got to remember what electric potential and electromotive force are also called, and that's voltage. So if you want to measure voltage, you use a voltmeter. So a voltmeter measures electric potential or electromotive force. What is the correct way to connect a voltmeter to a circuit? Well, to hook a voltmeter to the circuit, you want to hook it in parallel with the circuit, and that's the answer on the exam, in parallel with the circuit. So if you take the two ends of the voltmeter, the place where, where the current goes into the circuit and where the current comes out of the circuit you're trying to measure, that's, that's parallel to the circuit. So that's where you want to test. So you hook a voltmeter in parallel with the circuit. How is an ammeter usually connected to a circuit? Well, first of all, an ammeter measures amperes, which makes sense. And amperes is current. So to measure current, contrary to what you would do with a voltmeter and place the leads parallel to the circuit, you place the ammeter's leads in series with the circuit. And that's the, that's the answer you're looking for in the exam, in series with the circuit. Now, what series means, it's along the same path as a circuit. So if you're going to measure current in a river or a stream, what you would do is you would throw some sort of marker, like a buoy or a ball or something upstream, and then you would measure how long that takes to flow down to a, a second point down the river or stream. Same type of idea with an ammeter. Um, that type of measurement is measuring in series. So you want to place the leads to the am ammeter in series with the circuit. Which instrument is used to measure electric current? And we kind of went over this. An ammeter measures current. Current, amperes, ammeter, it all makes sense. What instrument is used to measure resistance? Now, resistance is measured in ohms, and you should remember that from a previous lesson. And it makes sense that, therefore, an ohmmeter measures resistance. So resistance, ohm, ohmmeter. Which of the following might damage a multimeter? And this is kind of a, a tricky question, but it, it's just something you're going to have to remember. Attempting to measure voltage when using the resistance setting in a, in a multimeter may damage the, the meter. And that's the answer in the exam, attempting to measure voltage when using the resistance setting. So basically, you just want to make sure that you're using the correct setting for what you're trying to measure. And that you're playing the, also, you need to place the multimeter leads in the correct place in the circuit. But attempting to measure voltage when using the resistance setting will possibly damage your multimeter. Which of the following measurements are commonly made using a multimeter? Voltage and resistance are the, the two big ones. Most multimeters can check for voltage, resistance, and capacitance. They do not measure RF, SWR, standing wave ratio, or single signal strength or impedance, usually. Uh, there are some fancy ones out there that you can get now that do these crazy things, but the standard everyday run-of-the-mill multimeter sticks to voltage and resistance. So if you don't have a multimeter, you need to get one. They're a pretty good piece of gear. Which of the following types of solder is best for radio and electronic use? All right, the best type of solder for radio and electronic use is rosin core solder, according to the exam. Um, it, it melts easily and doesn't corrode electrical connections like some other types of solder might over long periods of time. And this is sort of a memorization question. So just remember, rosin core solder is best for electronic use. What is the characteristic appearance of a cold solder joint? Well, a cold solder joint appears grainy or has a dull surface. And this generally means that the solder didn't get hot enough when, it, when it, the solder melted to the contact. Now, it can produce a poor electrical connection, which is bad, and sometimes it doesn't stick well and you get short circuits and a bunch of other stuff. But um, grainy or dull surface is the general characteristic of a cold solder joint. What is probably happening when an ohmmeter connected across a circuit initially indicates a low resistance and then shows increasing resistance with time? And this is one of those make your head hurt questions. The answer is the circuit contains a large capacitor. And you have to remember from previous lessons that a capacitor will gradually build up an electric field that stores energy. Now, as current, current will gradually decrease as the plates become charged on the capacitor, and the current in the circuit will completely stop once the plates become fully charged. You also have to remember, to complete this question, Ohm's law, which states that voltage, current, and resistance are all related. So in a circuit, if a voltage remains the same and the current is slowly decreasing, 
then the resistance has to increase, which makes sense in the e equals IR equation. So like I said, this will make your head hurt, but if a circuit initially indicates low resistance and then shows increasing resistance with time, the circuit probably contains a large capacitor. Which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring circuit resistance with an ohmmeter? All right, the answer on the exam is to ensure that the circuit is not powered, which is kind of funny because based on the last question, the circuit was powered and you're measuring with an ohmmeter. But the correct answer, and what you should do always, is ensure that the circuit is not powered if you're measuring resistance with an ohmmeter. Which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring high voltages with a voltmeter? The answer is ensure that the voltmeter and leads are rated for use at the voltages to be measured. And this is a safety first type of answer. Um, different voltmeters can handle different voltages and you don't want to test um, a, a household voltage with a voltmeter that's been designed to test like voltage on a circuit board. Um, basically what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a big molten mess of melted voltmeter and then some burns if you don't go to the hospital or if you manage to live through the experience. So which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring high voltages with a voltmeter? Is ensure that the voltmeter and leads are rated for use at the voltages to be measured. And that's it for the review and now it's time for the T7D quiz. So take out a pencil and paper number 1 through 12. I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick as usual so if you need more time just pause the video. When you're done, check your web answers at uh, handwhisper.com. You can go to the exam answers page and click on the T7D link. And with that, let's get started with the quiz. Question one. What instrument would you use to measure electric potential or electromotive force? A, an ammeter, B, a voltmeter, C, a wave meter, or D, an ohm meter? Question two. What is the correct way to connect a voltmeter to a circuit? A, in series with the circuit, B, in parallel with the circuit, C, in quadrature with the circuit, or D, in phase with the circuit. Question three, how is an ammeter usually connected to a circuit? A, in series with the circuit, B, in parallel with the circuit, C, in quadrature with the circuit, or D, in phase with the circuit. Question four, which instrument is used to measure electric current? A, an ohmmeter. B, a wave meter, C, a voltmeter, or D, an ammeter. Question 5. What instrument is used to measure resistance? A, an oscilloscope, B, a spectrum analyzer, C, a noise bridge, or D, an ohmmeter. Question 6. Which of the following might damage a multimeter? A, measuring a voltage too small for the chosen scale, B, leaving the meter in the milliamps position overnight, C, attempting to measure voltage when using the resistance setting, or D, not allowing it to warm up properly. Question 7. Which of the following measurements are commonly made using a multimeter? A, SWR and RF power, B, signal strength and noise, C, impedance and reactance, or D, voltage and resistance. Question 8. Which of the following types of solder is best for radio and electronic use? A, acid core solder, B, silver solder, C, rosin core solder, or D, aluminum solder. Question 9. What is the characteristic appearance of a cold solder joint? A, dark black spots, B, a bright or shiny surface, C, a grainy or dull surface, or D, a greenish tint. Question 10. What is probably happening when an ohmmeter connected across a circuit initially indicates a low resistance and then shows increasing resistance with time? A. The ohmmeter is defective. B. The circuit contains a large capacitor. C. The circuit contains a large inductor. Or D. The circuit is a relaxation oscillator. And question 11. Which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring circuit resistance with an ohmmeter? A. Ensure the applied voltages are correct. B. Ensure the circuit is not powered. C. Ensure that the circuit is grounded. Or D. Ensure the circuit is operating at the correct frequency. And question 12. Which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring high voltages with a voltmeter? A. Ensure that the voltmeter has very low impedance. B. Ensure that the voltmeter and leads are rated for use at the voltages to be measured. C. Ensure that the circuit is grounded through the voltmeter. 
or D, ensure that the voltmeter is set to the correct frequency. And that's it for Lesson 26 in the T7D section. Now that you're done with the quiz, be sure to go to handwhisper.com and check your answers. And until next time in Lesson 27, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.